What's the crack everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Cards Everywhere here, bringing you another weekly league deck profile. I've gone with the Natural Monuments this week with some support cards to hit the big stuff running around. It is a very high energy week this week, so most people are playing big card decks. So I'll give you a quick run through and we'll jump into a game. So first off, the door to hell. On the draw, your cards in hand burn 50 until played and gain 50 power this turn. Next we have Looking Glass Rock. On the play, gain 70 power this turn and then on the return, if you lost the turn, lose 10 power permanently. Next we have Grand Prismatic Spring. On the play, for every non-science album in your deck, your Natural Monuments cards, wherever they are, gain 4 power until played. Then we have Krishna's Butterball. On the play, if played in the middle slot, the card opposite this loses 50 power this turn, and 9 of your random natural monuments and 9 of your random weird world cards, wherever they are, gain 23 power until played. Next we have Vinkunka. On the draw, if your deck contains at least one card from each album, your Majestic Mountains, Natural Monuments and Hidden Gems cards, wherever they are, gain 22 power until played. Next we have Rainey's Drengar. On the draw, if your deck has three or more Norse Mythology cards, your Natural Monuments cards, wherever they are, gain 25 power until played. Next we have Seven Coloured Arts. On the play, if it's after round 2, your cards in hand gain 26 power this turn. Then we have Giant's Causeway. On the return, your opponent's cards, wherever they are, lose 20 power next turn. And if you won the turn, they lose 10 power next turn. Then we have Cyclopean Isles. On the play, your original Odyssey cards, wherever they are, gain 29 power until played. And then on the return, your Natural Monuments cards, wherever they are, cost minus 1 energy for 4 turns. We are only playing Cyclopean Isles since we are playing Tetsudo Formation. It can get out of hand on some turns, we want to be able to play 3 cards a turn. And the final Natural Monument is Sahara El Beda. At the start of a turn, your Natural Monuments cards, wherever they are, gain 5 power until played, and all other cards lose 2 power until played. Next we have the support. The first one is the Mythic, Lightspeed Travel. On the draw, if your deck has 9 or more Science cards, your Science cards, wherever they are, gain 10 power permanently. Next we have some Norse Mythology cards to go with the album this week. First one is Heimdall. On the return, if at least 6 cards in your deck are from different albums, your cards, wherever they are, gain 30 power this round. Then we have Not. On the return, if you have played Dragar this game, your opponent's cards, wherever they are, cost plus 1 energy for 3 turns. This can help cause a little bit of disruption for the opponent. Next we have Dragar. On the draw, if you have played not this game, your cards in hand gain 20 power until played. Next up, General Sherman. On the play, your opponent's cards, wherever they are, with 50 or more base power, lose 30 power this round. Then we have Tetsudo Formation. On the return, your cards, wherever they are, gain 48 power and cost plus 3 energy this round. Second to last, we have Arthur Plura. On the play, your opponent's cards in hand, with 45 or more base power, lose 30 power this turn and next turn. And finally, Bobbit Worm. On the return, all cards, wherever they are, with 50 or more base power, lose 25 power until played. So that is the deck, guys. It has been doing quite well for me. It does pull up a good fight against the big space decks running around. And the some of the Life on Land and Oceans and Seas cards, um, they've been doing quite well this week. I've actually been playing with round with one of them myself. I might post it later in the week. But for now, we'll go with the Natural Monuments, a good reliable deck. Let's hope we can get a real opponent to show it off. Hopefully we find someone quick enough. 
I have been enjoying this week. I've seen quite a bit of variety. Plenty of teen decks running around. They can't, can't quite compare it to the big stuff. Looks like we have found a bot, I believe. So I'll play another game after this one. But this will give you an idea of how the deck runs. So we'll go with Tetsuro, Cyclopean Isles, and I suppose we'll get around the Dragger. So this is one of the big space decks. You might see something similar this week. So hopefully we can put on a good show here. We got the Tetsuro formation, so I'm pretty confident this round. So I think I'll go with the Seven Coloured Earths, the Giant's Causeway, and I suppose the Vinkuka for a six, 465. The opponent was able to keep up, keep up there, but we still have another turn here to pull through this round. And we should have some good help there from the Giant's Causeway. So I think we'll try and go all out with the natural monuments here to see if we can get the win this round. Looks like we were able to pull through there. And hopefully our Heimdall comes out this turn so we can take full advantage of that this round. There it is. So I think we'll get the Door to Hell the General Sherman and the Heimdall out. The opponent also has the Heimdall going from, but we got our General Sherman, so we should be in a good position for this round as well. So we'll see what we draw here. Not a super strong turn. So I think I'll go with a bit of a weaker hand, but the Art of Plura should make up for it. A very strong turn from the opponent. But we do have the Looking Glass Rock, and hopefully some other powerful stuff will come around here. So I'll go Looking Glass Rock with the Bobbit Worm and the Cyclopean Isles, and we'll see if that's enough. Unfortunately, not enough to win this round. But we should be able to win the next round since we have the arena advantage with our Norse mythology cards. So I think I'll go with the Vinkunka, the Dragar, and the Tetsuyo formation. The opponent has the General Sherman. But we should be in an okay position here. The Tetsuyo formation will give us a nice big boost for the round. And our General Sherman should be coming around here this turn. Unfortunately not, it must be next turn. I um, think we'll go with the Seven Coloured Earths and the Giant's Causeway just to ensure the round. And that will put us well in the lead here. And we are also getting our Door to Hell this round, I believe, as well. So I think we will play like this for a 679 finish. More than enough to finish out this round. And hopefully the knot puts him in a awkward position next turn. We will still try and go for the win this round.
So we go with the Spring, the General Sherman, and the Heimdall. So the opponent also has a Heimdall, which is not ideal for us, but we'll just play our weakest cards if we need to. And go for the win in the final round. Which I think I will do. I'll take the hit on the loss of the turn with Looking Glass Rock and go for the finish in the final round. The Bubble Worm and the Arthur should ensure the victory in round three. So we will get rid of our weakest stuff here and the Cyclopean Isles just for the Tetsudo next round. And since we are playing a bot, they use the General Sherman instead of saving it for our next round. So we should be perfectly fine here. Uh, hopefully we get a real, real opponent next game to give a good showcase of the deck. Well, here we go into the final round. So we get the Tetsudo out with the most expensive cards. And we also start off with a nice strong lead, so we should be in a great position here to finish out this game. And I believe our Dr. Hell is also coming around at the end of this round. So we should have no problems winning here. So we go Seven Colored Earths, Giant's Causeway, and I suppose the Rainy for a 736. The opponent was able to win out the turn there, but we still have a plenty of a lead, and the Giant's Causeway should finish out the game for us. So I think we'll just go with the all the natural formation cards. And there is the victory against the boss. But we'll jump into another game now and hopefully get a real opponent so you can get a better showcase of how the deck functions. So we'll just jump straight into another one here. See if we can get the final rank here to get into the top ranks. So as I said, I've been having a good bit of fun this week. Uh, plenty of variety. The mammals are doing well, but certainly the big stuff decks do pull us do pull the big numbers this week. Um, mostly the space ones are the strongest ones I've seen. Similar to what the bot was playing there, but just played more efficiently. Seem to be having trouble finding real opponents today. Hopefully we get one here. So what all are you playing this week? Don't forget to share in the comments. Let me know what you think is the strongest. Looks like we are facing another bot again. A bit unfortunate, but I suppose I'll take the easy wins while they come. So we get the Dragger round with the Grand Prismatic Spring. No, I suppose we play the Vinkuka and the Seven Coloured Arts for a 159 start. So we're playing against a Space Technology deck. It's a bit of a low energy deck for this week, but I'm sure I can pull some big numbers. There is the Tetsudo formation, so I think I'll play that now so it's lined up for later in the game. And we'll see if we can sneak out a victory here this round. We are a decent bit behind here. 
But with the formation boost, we might be able to pull it out. So I think I'll just go with the strongest hand I can make. And that is enough to finish out round one. And hopefully we get our Heimdall here next turn. There it is. So we get the Heimdall. The Lightspeed Travel. And I suppose the Bobbit Worm. So for some reason the AI doesn't always play every card. It only played two cards there. So it looks like this will be a very easy game for us. So I suppose we'll get the Not Around with the Giant's Causeway and the Rainy. So we are still well in the lead here and all of his cards will be a little bit more expensive but that is undone by the very large array. So we'll play the Finkunka, the Dragar and the Psychopian Isles for a 5-3-3. More than enough to finish out the turn. And I think with the Tetsudo formation, we will be in a good position here for the final round of the game. I don't think we'll be losing to the Bosch in this round anyway. So we'll go with Tetsudo, the General Sherman, and we'll set the door to hell around just in case. So we had plenty of stuff there with the General Sherman. So I think with the Arthur Plura, with the Seven Coloured Earths, will be enough to get ahead here next turn. So we'll play the Arthur Plura, the Butterball, and the Seven Coloured Earths for a 496, plus the Butterball boost. So the Arthur Plura doing plenty of damage to the opponent. That puts us right in the lead, and I think with the cards in our hand, we are looking quite good here for the final turn. So we'll go all out with the Natural Monuments for a 692, and that should be enough to finish out the game. And there we have it, folks. So unfortunately we didn't get any real opponents there, but I assure you the deck does do very well. So I think we'll leave it there and I will catch you later in the week with more videos. I hope you did enjoy. Cars everywhere. Out.